What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff every Monday morning right here at twitch.tv slash what's good games. I'm Andrea Renee, joined by Miss Brittany Brombacher. Can you hear me, Andrea? I can hear you, and it's oh. glorious. Brittany. Yeah. Did you catch any of the streams that happened last week that you were not on? Which ones? Like... The Halo? Like the, the Halo. Halo one, yeah. Oh, no, I did not catch it, unfortunately. Did you kill lots of grunts and elites? Um, I forgot just how floaty um, the, mm. the not only the traversal is, but the combat is as well. So it was like a grunt boop a palooza. Just boop. Oh, my gosh. Little, little boop. boops. They're the best, and I love it when you put the skull on that they explode into confetti. If you nail a headshot, I don't know if you turn that one on. I don't think that skull is available in Combat Evolved. Oh, okay, I, I think it only one. is in later in later ones. So we got started a little late today, friends, because yeah. we were working on some audio stuff over the weekend, and OBS is a finicky, finicky piece of software. It's a powerhouse, but boy, oh boy, does she oh. like things in a very particular way. <laughs> Yeah, I got acquainted with her last week during the Xbox stream. And, uh, yeah, she and I got off to a rough start. Uh, <laughs> you know, I tried smooth talking her, buying her some flowers. She said, fuck you, don't want your stupid ass flowers. I'm going to crash anyway, and she did. But thankfully, during the actual stream itself, smooth sailing. But getting that thing set up, oh boy. Yeah, so boy. Uh, first off, you did a great job, Britt. Like, don't beat yourself up. OBS is difficult. Um, I popped into the chat and caught some of the reacts from you and Zombie Kills, which was such a fun morning and was super jealous that you guys started it off with drinks. Oh, but yeah. I did have a lot of fun working with the folks at Twitch Gaming. If you guys missed the episode of the weekly that I was on and the official Xbox Games post, or Xbox Games Showcase post show that I hosted, you can find those VODs over at twitch.tv slash Twitch Gaming. You can also find Brittany and Zombie's live reacts on our channel, twitch.tv slash what's good games and of course a big thank you to zombie kills for guesting on the podcast last week with us as well she was absolutely phenomenal uh steimer was busy doing some work things i realized we never really explained why steimer oh. was on the episode um but she had yeah. some other things that she was working on but she will be back this week so have no fear everybody steimer, steimer will, will be return. here yes oh there you go oh you see you went for the rhyme that's yeah. what i should have done went for the rhyme yeah <laughs> All right. Well, before we get into the news, speaking of which, we will be talking about some additional Halo Infinite details. That Nintendo Giga Leak that happened, the Ghost of Tsushima, patch notes, and more Witcher content is coming to Netflix. I want to mention to you that we have a couple more streams happening, so I feel like I want to make Andrea's Animal Crossing afternoons like an ongoing recurring thing. Love it. Uh, also, alliteration is fun. So I'm thinking Wednesdays are, are going to be the day that I'm going to stream. So right now, I'm looking at Wednesday afternoons with a start time at 1 p.m. Pacific to give me a couple of hours to get some streaming in before we record the show for the week. So if you guys want to join me, you can set up notifications and hang out with me on my Animal Crossing island. And then um, I'm turning older this week, which I'm not very excited about. <laughs> but I am excited that it's my birthday and I bought some like yes. really dumb things to celebrate in quarantine. And so I'm thinking about doing a stream. But I don't think it's going to happen on my actual birthday. I'm thinking about doing okay. it the following week or the following weekend. Okay. Haven't decided on a date yet, Britt. It'll be a good time. Yes. Pop some... Party poppers, eat some cake, drink some champagne. Yeah. Nothing but the best champagne. And I so bought. So, what can people, I want to know, like, what can people expect during, during your Animal Crossing afternoon, whatever you call it? I already forgot what you called it. An Andrea's, Andrea's Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing afternoons. afternoons. So, there we go. So, here's what I'm thinking I'm thinking okay. that every week we'll kind of, you know, maybe an tail something different but we'll just be on my island so maybe some weeks I'll go on Nook Mile tours or maybe uh -oh. weeks I'll go visit you know subscriber islands or maybe I'll just spend the entire time fishing who knows it's whatever it like kind a nice of relaxing chill time exactly which is needed that's exactly nice. what it is it's just like it's chill if you're looking for something chill to watch you want to hang out with some people in chat I feel like that's the kind of vibe that I 
need and continue to need and I think we'll all continue to need I think we'll all need it yes. knowing how 2020 is going um but I've realized that when I play Animal Crossing I get distracted very often and it's hard for me to focus on a specific project which <laughs> surprise I get distracted <laughs> um, so it's like I don't want to like commit to being like this is only where I'm going to decorate or only where I'm going to do this because there's so many different things that you can do to pass the time. I almost use the word waste, but it's oh. not it's not wasting. No, no, it's not. I've been trying to take inspiration from my villagers and going like if I actually lived on an island and this is all like all I had okay. to do was just like survive every day and mm -hmm. like try to find a way to spend my days. Like what would I do? And I'm like, you know, maybe sometimes we put like all of this pressure on ourselves to do so many big things mm -hmm. that we stop remembering that it's okay to just like have a day where you don't have an agenda where like, exactly. you're like all I'm gonna do is read a book today and that's it that's all I need yeah and being in the present I think we're always so focused on what's upcoming or even what happened in the past that we forget to just be in the present and live in the present and I think it's so therapeutic and so important especially right now but word you know? Word. I, I feel the same. I feel yeah. the same. Yep. Um, all right. On that note, let's go ahead and get into the news. So this week's news begins with uh, not so much a recap because we recapped it on the Friday show, but more of an update to some of the Halo Infinite interviews that have been rolling out over the last couple of days. People kind of deep diving into the coverage and pulling out some tidbits. So Brittany, yeah. take it away. I will take it all away. Can I take it all away? You shoved it in your face. You know that song? Good we're, job. Okay. We're definitely going to get a content ID strike. <laughs> oh, I mean, it is. I can't help it. I'm so talented, Andrea. <laughs> okay, so like Andrea said, yes, just some little upgrades, upgrades, updates on some particular you know what's about Halo. Anyway, I digress. So regarding multiplayer, so following rumors that Halo Infinite's multiplayer would not be ready by its launch in holiday 2020, 343 Industries has spoken up and said that is not true. Brian Gerard, Gerard, Halo's community director at 343 Industries, took to Twitter to clear up any confusion that Halo Infinite's multiplayer was delayed, saying, nothing to see here, folks. This is not true. Did you see this rumor that was making its rounds, Andrea, back in the, back in the day, aka on Thursday? Um, I did not see this rumor. I'm not going to lie. was a little busy and didn't see it. But okay, that's why I have news. you here to tell me all about it. Good news. It's not true. So don't, Good. don't worry. You can untwist your panties. And then regarding split screen, 343 Industries has confirmed that Halo Infinite's campaign will support two-player local split screen up to four players online. Jerry Hook, head designer at 343 Industries, took to Twitter to clarify that while Halo Infinite will support four-player split screen online, those playing locally will only be able to do so with one other person. I think that's fine. That was one of the big gripes from Halo 5, right? Is no local split screen. Never ye fear, friends. It will be back in Halo Infinite. So, regarding graphics, in an interview with Inside Gaming and Xbox marketing GM Aaron Greenberg, hi Aaron, Aaron, responded to criticism about Infinite's graphics, saying, quote, listen, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. It's July. We're far from launch and holiday. You're seeing a work in progress game. I can tell you because we see build check-ins every week and they make progress week after week. So between now and holiday, it's just going to get better and better. In a Q&A with 343 Industries, PC Games N was told that the footage, quote, was captured from a PC that is representative of the experience that players will have on Xbox Series X. So this was the one I was seeing a lot of people, I guess, sort of kind of griping, sort of kind of taking jabs at Xbox and Microsoft and 343 and Halo that it doesn't look like the most graphically impressive game. To that I say, when has Halo ever been the most graphically impressive game? That's not, I don't think, what it does, for example, it doesn't bother me. I don't look at a Halo game for the photorealism. It's all about the gameplay and gunplay. But what do you think, Andrea? What did you think about some of those stills in the footage? I think that some of the stills, um, you know, didn't look great. But again, like, games that are in pre-release are never going to look as good as when they're actually released. Also, it's important to remember if you are going to take the time to analyze the gameplay, go to the VOD, don't use the live stream right. and make sure you're watching it in the highest resolution that that particular video has available. A lot of people don't do this. And then whatever service you're using will auto downgrade the resolution. And then people are like, Oh, it looks like trash. And I'm like, yeah, but did you lock in the higher resolution? So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's honestly like one of the tougher things about 
these digital events and has always been a, a tough part for video game developers when they're streaming their gameplay is that most of the time you don't get it the way it's actually going to look on the console. And like we a know that just from the streaming we do. So, mm -hmm. And the, finally, the most important part, you cannot pet any animals in Halo Infinite. I've never wanted to pet animals in Halo. You're in a giant piece of like space armor. Like, it's fine. Uh, what would you even pet? The only animals I ever remember seeing, I think, are in, is it Combat Evolved or two? Like, the big birds. I think it's two. Those big, weird bird ostrich things ah. that are fucking vicious as hell. And they will eat your brains out. I don't know what they're called, but they're mean. Anywho, there's a few more little tidbits of info. Um, just paraphrasing here, but it looks like that one big open area of the Halo ring that you will be able to explore. It sounds like you'll be able to go back to that area if you... You know, like, let's say you're playing the game because the demo we saw was about seven hours in. It sounds like you're going to be able to go to that big area and then you can even probably backtrack. So it sounds like you might be getting some upgrades throughout the game that will help you Metroidvania light, if you will. I mean, I'm not saying Hills Metroidvania game. Please do not think that I'm saying that, but it just no. sounds like there will be. Yeah. So there's that. Um, Halo Infinite does have a time of day or day night cycle, which is interesting. And the upgrades, because we were talking about this a little bit on the Friday show, it looks like upgrades are items that you'll discover as you explore rather than some sort of experience based skill tree, which makes sense. So yeah. you have your drop shield or grappling hook. They maybe their modifications to that. No confirmation yet, but Halo Infinite, man. Halo Infinite. Yeah, I'm I'm glad that you made the very astute uh, like kind of observation that Halo has never been a game that people are like, oh my God, look at all the pixels. And so I think like this, this deep dive into the graphics has been kind of like, okay, so what? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I feel like we're going to have to wait until we see these games running on the native hardware before we make final judgments. And again, if you are out there concerned about your dollars and spending your dollars and getting a subpar product, I would say don't. You know, we talked about it on the stream um, on, I don't know if it was Friday's show or if it was like Thursday when we were doing um, our chat with Zombie, but it's like we're in a section now, or maybe it was my stream that I was doing on Friday when I was streaming Animal Crossing. It's just like you do not by any means necessary need to buy a console this holiday. There is really nothing coming to either of those new consoles this year that is going to be locked behind that paywall. I'm pretty sure... Everything coming out this fall is also going to be available on PS4 and Xbox One. So if you're already in those ecosystems, you don't need to worry about buying the new hardware. You can just wait. So I feel I like know. that's that's like the least uncontroversial ever. It's just like, well, then don't buy it. Boom. Don't buy it. Problem solved. RHD in chat thinks that the ostrich-looking things were in reach. I think you might be right. Anywho. And to quote one zombie, it's not a $500 million game. <laughs> it's not a 500 That's a lie. It's not a real story, zombie. <laughs> But I like that you have committed. I like that you have committed to this bit. Um, speaking okay. of things that aren't real but are sort of real, um, the That's Nintendo neat. Giga Leak. So somebody in the chat was like, "What the heck is the Giga Leak?" So for people who are not familiar with what the Nintendo Giga Leak is, I like it when you say Giga Leak. <laughs> Giga Leak. <laughs> when I, when I was seeing it online, I was like, "What the heck is this thing?" It basically it's like a whopper of a leak that happened with a bunch of legacy data. So there's a couple of different sites that have written this up, but I really liked the kind of summary that Polygon put together. Uh, Patricia Hernandez over at Polygon. Her headline reads: "Massive Nintendo Leak Reveals Early Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon Secrets." Now I'm not going to read through everything that's in the leak because there's a reason why they call it the Giga Leak. But essentially, it's a boatload of old files that have secret IDs that were notoriously impossible to crack. So it feels like this is potentially real because it's way more info than Nintendo has ever let out before. And some of it is interesting and some of it is like, oh, this very clearly shouldn't have been leaked. Like this, is, <laughs> this isn't something that the world needs to see or judge. Um, but just a couple of bullet points. There are some never before seen characters that were leaked as part of Art Asses, like a grandpa Yoshi that's got a white mustache. Um, we also got confirmation that yes, Mario is absolutely punching the hell out of Yoshi to elongate his tongue because they Terrible. have like a, a frame by frame of him like winding up his fist and literally like smacking him across the face and then him, 
his tongue going out. And I'm like, why? Why is why did it have to be that way? Oh, it's so sad. Yeah, because there's like a it's called a beta Yoshi. I don't know if you saw the beta Yoshi. In my notes, I have him described as a feeble naked cucumber because that's what he looks like. Yeah. But he's he just looks kind of gangly and lean. And yeah, there's a, a sprite or a gif. And literally, like Andrew said, he winds up, he punches it. You see the punch impact point because they highlight it. But then the difference is that Yoshi breathes fire, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, terrible, terrible. It it, it is. Free free Yoshi from his oppressor. Um, And then there's also things about Pokemon, uh, more Pokemon sprites and early versions of existing monsters and, of course, some unused ideas. So if you guys want to go down a rabbit hole and see it all, I mean, you can, you know, look at sites that have all of the data listed out. But the reason why I bring the story up is because it's controversial for a variety of reasons that I thought was pertinent for us to uh, discuss. So while fans are ecstatic to learn more about their favorite games, of course, why wouldn't you be? There are a few sticking points that people should be aware of. It seems likely that someone at some point broke the law, that all of this information is proprietary and probably never should have been leaked. But on a more humane level, none of this stuff was ever meant to be seen. Imagine that you will or that you are a creator of some sort. And let's say you're a writer and one day you log on and all of your unpolished, janky drafts and ideas get published to the internet. That would suck, right? Losing control over your own work, it would feel like pretty awful. So pushing this further into a morally dubious area is that the GigaLeak apparently contains personal information, including a diary and a calendar, along with private conversations between developers. One file, for instance, recounts a traumatic childhood experience involving Mr. Potato Head, which I'm sure that person doesn't want the internet to know about, but now they do. Given the type of information contained in the leak, along with its questionable provenance, some are wary of what's floating around, even if it's gone viral. A couple of game developers and commentators fear that the video game industry will become even more secretive than it already is to avoid leaks like this in the future. So obviously a lot of people have been responding to this online. There's a couple of people um, that had some interesting takes on it at Cheesemeister 3 k writes that corporate security measures and surveillance will likely be increased industry-wide, adding more pressure on employees, making hard jobs even more difficult. The exposure of code and assets make it easier for competitors to appropriate techniques. Revealing rough drafts, works in progress, and private communications can embarrass their authors, damage their reputations, and even set their careers back. And then at Mike J. Mika writes, real talk, this Nintendo leak is bad on so many levels. It hurts them, it hurts fans, and it turns the topic of preservation into a topic of security and tightening the grip on intellectual property, regardless of its historical or educational value to history. Yeah, <sighs> it's, it's a whole thing. So I thought this was all kind of fascinating because I first heard about it because they're like, oh, Luigi was, I think, playable in Mario 64. And that's like an interesting little tidbit of story. Like, oh, and then I learned that it's part of this huge leak. So in 2008, a hacker infiltrated Nintendo servers between May- March and May. Right. And it's rumored that they stole two terabytes of stolen data. And this person was arrested and they were given a suspended sentence. Uh, so essentially they're not incarcerated right now. But they did leak this information to a curated group. And it sounds like they're slowly releasing data, perhaps as they're uncovering it. I'm not entirely sure what that trickle of information is like. Yeah. But so far, everything we've seen has just been three gigs. And we're talking over two terabytes of shit taken, dating all the way back to 1989. Dude. Insane. It's absolutely insane. And what's interesting about this hacker is that he almost got prison time for hacking stuff into Microsoft. And just like a few months later, he infiltrated Nintendo. So person never learned their lesson, clearly. Anyway, fascinating stuff. And it's difficult because as a fan of all this, it was interesting looking at some of these Zelda Ocarina of Time dungeons that we never got to see that were rumored from the Zelda Ura project. You know, looking at these old Yoshi models and whatnot and looking at the Mario 64 stuff. But yeah, it's like, well, you know, it's fascinating. And from a historical perspective, you know, from the video game, it's really cool. But... It's tricky because, like you said, there is that controversial side of it. Is Should this have leaked in the first place? It was never meant to. Yeah, exactly. And so you always want to talk about preservation and talk about, you know, what can companies do to put some of these things into video game museums or to submit them for digital preservation because that's a growing concern among, you know, video game history enthusiasts. But I... I, I lean towards like, yeah, dude, that would suck. 
Like I think about how many things that I've cut out of our like test records and all of the cutting room floor stuff of What's Good Games. And, you know, some of it obviously is funny. Like we put together like a super cut of some of the stuff that happens during the breaks and all of that. But like there's also like some you know, random conversations that we'll talk about, like how our families are doing or, you know, like, you know, what mm -hmm. somebody else in the industry is doing. And we'll have like, you know, just like regular conversations that friends have. And I wouldn't want all of that just like published. Thankfully, no. most of it's like deleted. But like, it's just one of those things that like, even if they're innocuous and they're not controversial conversations, they're still private. Like, I don't think anybody would want any of their phone calls or text messages that they have with their friends and family just published for people to read, mm -hmm. even if they're not doing anything nefarious or anything illegal. It's like, it still it feels like an invasion of privacy in like the most real way. Yeah. So it's bad. Yep. It's bad. Interesting. So I have a feeling that we're going to be seeing a lot more, a lot more because it's starting to come out now. That's what she said. Yeah. Well, hopefully these people that have all the information are a little bit more sensitive about releasing things. I mean, you want to ask them not to, but we know that they're gonna. Oh so no, like, there's no way. Yeah, <laughs> lol, lol, lol. Yeah. But in better news, there is a new patch happening for Ghost of Tsushima. So Sucker Ooh. Punch. Yeah, this actually looks really interesting. So Ghosts of Tsushima, of course, developed by Sucker Punk. They put out a little message today that says, Later today, patch 1.05 for Ghosts of Tsushima will be released, bringing new combat and text options. It includes a new difficulty level called Lethal, where enemy weapons are more deadly, but Jin's katana is also more deadly. Ooh. Enemies... <laughs> exactly. Enemies are more aggressive in combat. Enemies will detect you faster, faster, and there are tighter parry and dodge windows. Britt, did you need this game to be more... More difficult no absolutely not <laughs> i don't need that at all well but good for you because there's lower that. intensity combat mode too what so in the accessibility menu sucker punch has added low intensity mode meant to maintain the heart and feel of ghost of tsushima in combat while relaxing several timing specific elements so combat ah. is less intense giving you more time to react stealth settings are more forgiving and enemies take longer to detect you most enemies which are normally unblockable become blockable and blocking will keep you safe from more attacks than standard combat though some attacks still must be dodged Enemies will break off their combos after damaging you, giving you a chance to recover. And in addition, your heavy attacks will interrupt attacks from brutes, giving you another way to stop the combos. Plus, you can use or enemies will not attack you while you're healing and they will have their awareness build more slowly, giving you more time to recover after being spotted. Plus, they're adding text changes with a large text option, oh, excuse me, option, which increases the text size of subtitles, mission objectives and interactive prompts by 150 percent when enabled plus the option to turn the speaker name off and new color options as well, all of which are great for accessibility. Hell yeah. This is fantastic. This is great. It's a good start. I remember when I first fired up Ghost of Sushi Ghost, it was right after, well, maybe like a few days after I'd finished TLU 2, and obviously the accessibility options and TLU 2 are just unmatched. And I remember hopping into the accessibility and Sushi Ghost and thinking, like, I'm very you know, fortunate that the only thing I really need are larger subtitles because my eyesight is kind of shit, even with contacts and it's hard to read subtitles, especially when I'm playing in Japanese. But I remember just thinking like, wow, like you go from TLU 2 accessibility to this, it was just kind of, it was a reality check, right? Not that Sucker Punch didn't do any work in accessibility. There were some options, but it's fantastic that this is being added in. It's great. Absolutely. And I think that it shows a commitment from Sony's first party studios, at least that, Hey, if this wasn't part of our development cycle, we can add it in. It's just going to take a little bit more time and it's better that they are patching it in after launch instead of just saying, well, we didn't have time to add it. So it's not going to get added, but they're mm -hmm. also doing a bunch of bug fixes. They, they didn't list the specific bug fixes, at least in the patch notes that I read. I'm sure that those are listed out somewhere. If I was to like click like the next page or whatever, but I'm glad to see that they're working on bugs because boy, oh boy. <laughs> I hope they don't get rid of the skin flute one. That one is just so funny. <laughs> it's such a dumb bug too. <laughs> oh I didn't goodness. even realize at first that his hands are literally coming out of like where his hips are. I was like, what is happening? It's just insane. Yeah. So Did you see the combat clip that I posted of him trying to like hold the sword? 
with his hands like glued to his side. Is that what was happening? I saw that, but I couldn't yeah. quite make out what was. So that's the thing is that his hands could keep moving, but like his arms were like to his sides. And so like when you run, oh my gosh, when you run, it's like it's almost like the Naruto run when, <laughs> when you're sprinting. But like a little bit worse because like at least in the Naruto run, the arms are like airplaned out behind. But in this one, the arms are just to the side and his face is like leaning forward. And I'm like, oh, God. So funny. <laughs> You're going to face plant so hard. I am Jean. I am samurai. Doink running in like at the camp like that. Oh, no. You know, it's so funny because I never we talked about this on the show, but I've seen so many funny bugs coming out of this game. I love Ghost of Tsushima, yeah. but. I never had one issue like that whatsoever. It's just fascinating how some people who play a game can have issues and then others, none whatsoever. I am kind of sad, though, I didn't get the skin flute bug. Oh, well, my, my clip will live on the internet forever. Good. As um, it should. <laughs> All right, Britt, we got some Witcher news up next. We do. So Witcher Netflix showrunner announces prequel series set 1,200 years earlier. This comes from Eurogamer. Lauren Histrich, showrunner for the Witcher Netflix series, has announced a new six-part series called The Witcher Blood Origin. It will be a prequel story set 1,200 years before Geralt and the events we're familiar with, and will start and will chart the origin of the Witchers and how they came to be. Histrich confirmed Witcher creator Andrzej Sapkowski will, quote, hell yes be involved oh okay I, I understand what they were going for there it was just a little confusing at first yeah okay. th that the creator is obviously going to be consulting that th someone was like is Andrzej Sapowski going to be involved and someone said hell yes there we go okay quotes this has been the toughest secret to keep tweeted his stretch I've always wanted to dive deeper into the myth and lore of the continents and now fans will have a chance to explore it with Declan de Bara in a prequel series the Witcher blood origin elves and enemies in the end oh my Declan de Bara wrote quote wrote the quote of banquets bastards and burials episode of the Witcher series currently available on Netflix he also has writing credits on Marvel's Iron Fist and the originals there's no release date nor any mention of characters or cast when I first saw the story, I thought, holy shit, I need to get my act together and freaking watch The Witcher. Wait a minute. You still haven't watched it? No. Brittany, it's so good. I know. I know. I know. I don't know. It's just like there's been a pandemic and my mind's been elsewhere, you know? I, I don't know. It's weird. I mean, but once you, once you see Henry as Geralt, you'll be like, god damn it. Why did I wait so long? I know. I'm, I'm really depriving myself. It's, uh, it's not good. But so really, Yennefer you, is the star it. of the series. Yes. She's just the star of everything. Yeah. Jennifer. Well, I mean, the caveat for me and my, my big gripe in the first couple of episodes, and, like, it gets better as you continue on the series, is that they throw a ton of information at you, and it's impossible to follow unless you either stick it out through the series and then they bring it back around later on, or you've played the games or read the books. Right. Because like, there's a whole bunch of timelines in that one, right, that they throw out you and they don't really make it clear which timeline you're watching. No, it would have been really easy to do that, uh, I think, through just a costume, like a costume change for Geralt or putting something about the way that his hair is like maybe his hair is like pulled back in a specific way or something aesthetically yeah. to like indicate or they could have just wrote the year like you know, like a in a Chiron on the bottom of the screen, and then that would have taken care of that problem, no, no issue. Because like the real trouble is that these characters don't age, right? And so you jump back and forth potentially hundreds of years, but like they don't look any different. <laughs> so. That is confusing. But it sounds like this one will be following one storyline. I did read that somewhere else. Yeah. So that's good. I mean, yeah, bring it on. That's a series I've always wanted to read. Um, but I have never bought the English translations, but maybe now's the time. They're really good. That's one thing I have done is I have read the books. See, there you go. go. So you've read the books and I've watched the series. Yin and Yang. Wait. Exactly. Yeah. That. Um, all right. So we have a couple more, uh, things here to go over in case you missed it. Britt and I and Steimer talked about that Red Dead online clown protest, <laughs> <laughs> that was happening. If you guys missed it, a bunch of people dressed up as clowns because they thought Rockstar was behaving like clowns or they think that they're clowns for believing that Rockstar would continue to support that was it. Yep. Red Dead Online's ongoing content drops. And now, of course, they feel like they're vindicated because 
Rockstar indeed announced that a massive new update is happening this week, and it's adding a frontier pursuit, pursuit that will introduce players to secrets of naturalism with a new role, Outlaw Pass, and tons of community requested features, and that there is more content, massive updates, uh, yes. happening later this year for both Red Dead and GTA Online, including some new extensions and augmentations. Um, here's the thing. All of this was in the works before y'all decided to dress up like clowns. I do think it's, you know, funny that you guys were able to organize and dress up like clowns to protest, but your protest did not cause this release to happen. <laughs> no, I think it's just so cute. It was one of those feel-good protests. Like, we're clowns for expecting, I think it was, what, seven months without any updates to Red Dead Online, which is pretty crazy. But here you go. It's happening. Now you can take yep. off those clown costumes and go back to being a cowboy or cowgirl. Exactly. Keeping cows. Whatever you do in that game. And in case you missed it, Logitech announced their partnership with Herman Miller. So we saw that they were going to be working together a couple months back. And they didn't really say what they were going to do. But we assumed it would be some kind of gaming chair, right? Because Herman Miller makes fancy chairs. And they unveiled the Fancy Pants Embody Chair from Herman Miller that is designed especially for gamers. And boy, oh boy, does this thing look sweet. I'm not going to go over all of the fancy details, but if you aren't familiar with Herman Miller chairs, there's some of the top of the line office chairs that you can get that are designed for you to sit in for many hours at a time. They're ergonomic for your back, your neck, your arms, and everything that you use while you're sitting at a desk. And this chair looked so good that I had to place the order button. I got one. It's I coming. am excited for you. I'm kind of tempted to do the same. This yeah. chair I have behind me, I've had for many years. It's a fine chair. It does the job. But when you were talking about back support, I was like, you know, I really don't have any. I like, I'm kind of forced to like sit up. My back is just like, Wah. there's nothing, nothing caressing it, nothing forming against it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I like need that. Back support is important. That's why this chair is so expensive. A lot of people in the comments initially on this chair were like, oh my gosh, it's so expensive. And I was like, good equipment for your body tends to be more expensive because it's designed with your spine in mind. And this chair has a 12 year warranty. So I put it on the credit card and I'm like, that sounds like a future Andrea problem. <laughs> um, I'll think about how much I owe when the chair arrives. Uh, but I wanted to do a review of this. So, of course, I reached out to our friends at Logitech. They've been a sponsor of What's Good Games oh. in the past. right? And I was like, hey, so uh, do you have any like uh, units of this chair uh, that you can send? And it was like crickets. And I was like, okay, I get it. I'll just buy my own. It's fine. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, I, I want one. You're going to have to report back. You're going to have to let me know how your spine feels. Oh, and I just want to say um, in the in the uh, chat we have it looks like yacht subak yacht what is that what is that subak yot subak yot subak yot subak foreign I don't I don't know how to say your name oh it's yacht subachan <laughs> oh yeah I, well because I'm like bak because you know Bram Bakker yes I, I have a respect for the bak. I guess that was wrong. Well, I think it's the the A and the C are s supposed to be separated there. Like, they're two oh, separate yeah. words. Oh, yeah, and the four is an A. That's Lee. Okay. But, okay. but uh, th what they're saying is that they have the regular Herman Miller and body chair, and they said, uh, oh, their husband has it. Their husband has it uh, for the last nine years, and it's still great. So, boom. All right. But we Go haven't ahead. tried it yet, so we don't, we don't know. Mm. I have sat in Herman Miller chairs before, back when I used oh. to work in offices, and they were very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Uh, also coming back is G4. What? Uh, that's really all the news we have is that they're coming back. They like put out a couple cryptic tweets last week and it looks like after some deep divings, it looks like their digital front is coming back in 2021. And it's unclear how much of a role TV will play in G4, but it appears from what I've seen that they're going to focus on digital, which yeah. Makes sense. So I guess we'll keep eyes on what's happening with G4. And Interesting. Then, yeah. did, were you ever a big G4 watcher? I kind of sort of was. So G4 is actually the reason why I started blogging about games in the first place in 2009. Because I had just moved up to a apartment in the U District, in University of Washington in downtown Seattle. I was doing like a three-hour commute every day. And G4, I had just discovered it. And it was kind of like my little my little happy place. And so I would watch it and X-Play in particular because it was on right when I got home from work. 
And I remember that's it was a E3 episode of Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb, I believe. And I was like, this is cool. I want to talk about video games. And that's what actually prompted me to start my first blog, my first vi- my first blog rather about video games was that episode of G4. So it has a real special place in my heart. I didn't watch it too much, maybe like every now and again, especially after I got rid of that commute and moved closer to my work. But uh, yeah, I think of uh, G4, I think of X-Play and I think of hot dogs. Amazing. Now I want a hot dog. And uh, thank you for the tip in the chat, Thirsty Panda and others. Uh, at G4TV tweeted 30 minutes ago, uh, to paraphrase Morgan, I believe that is a reference to Morgan Webb, former host of X-Play, we're glad someone remembered the passwords too. You have questions and we, quote, maybe have answers. This Friday at 12 p.m. Pacific, join our VP of Content Partnerships and Brand Development at Blair Herder, also former G4 talent, hey. for a mystery warehouse themed AM. A. So it sounds like on Monday show next week, we will have an update for you from what results from that AMA. Zombie Kill says cheaters. All I'm saying is I will host it. Zombie, I will be there yes. right next to you. That would be I amazing, think- Zombie. Hell yes. I think that's a new bucket list item. Host an episode of Cheaters. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, so much be. of that, so much of that programming on G four is gonna have to like dramatically change. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh boy. Um. Okay. Continuing <laughs> on. So Disintegration sent me a press release this morning. If you guys don't remember, Disintegration is the new game from V One Interactive, former Halo developers, who put out this sci fi robot humans in robot bodies campaign in pvp game about a month ago and it kind of went under the radar because of when they released was like right around tlu 2 and of course that stole all of the news but they're having a free weekend so if it looked interesting to you and you want to check out the pvp they're having a free weekend on pc playstation 4 and xbox one this weekend it starts on thursday july 30th you can join as their press release writes frenetic multiplayer battles in all three multiplayer game modes or dive in the game's riveting single player campaign as the full game will be available for free across all platforms. Wow. So if you want to check it out, you can check it out. And then if you decide you like it, all of your progress will be carried over when you make your purchase and you get it for 40% off on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. So. All right. I admittedly did not spend nearly enough time in the multiplayer for this game, dabbled in the campaign and was like, mm, mm, this really isn't really doing it for me. But the multiplayer was really what I had fun with when I tried it at PAX. So mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. time to get in and check it out. So chat, this next story is kind of fun. So I thought it was sort of kind of interesting how Anthem is getting, you know, Anthem is getting rebooted. Now, are the pirates new to Anthem? I'm assuming they're new. Has anyone else heard of these pirates before? No, um, I, I have not. No, I don't believe these are actual things. Well, there's obviously like bandits, but like the word pirate specifically, I don't think so. Okay. So Henry Chan tweeted to Christian Daly, who is studio director at Bioware Anthem, at oh, Bioware Austin, excuse me, on June 25th and said, hey, any update that you can share regarding the incubation of Anthem? And then Christian responded back and said, it is going well. Hopefully we can spotlight some of the focus areas soon. Proper progression, end game, and pirates. What topics would you like to see? So then Christian tweeted out some, which looks like to be concept art of pirates and a cool like pirate skull hideout with a bunch of ships and shit. I thought it looked interesting. And then I love Andrew's little side note in here. She goes, seems like not really anything here. News, game dev working on game, LOL. <laughs> which, is, which is fair. But anywho, the other little tidbit of info is this, is that Christian did set off a blog um, and now it's being approved. So hopefully we'll get some more info. I mean, I'm into pirates. I like, yeah, pirates are cool. Is this going to bring you back to Anthem? I'm going back to Anthem when they re- release 2.0, like regardless, regardless of how good it looks or how bad it looks. I just, I haven't played it. And so now I want to know it. I want to experience it. I like the idea of pirates, Andrea. I like the, the idea of a pirate skull cave and weird ships. But I think kind of the takeaway is, is that it sounds like they're just adding even more factions to this, which is, it's not going to, because I guess the the question is, what kind of overhaul is it going to be? Is it just going to be, we're adding some more content? Is it just going to be, we're going to tweak the game mechanics? But it looks like they're just going, in. 
<laughs> I see what but you tried to do there. I tried. It didn't. It didn't really work. I mean, I think that you know when they talk about player autonomy and proper progression between loot and your javelin and the end game, those are all like major things. But like those are like giant umbrella conversations about like, but what does that mean? What about progression? You know, what about loot? Because like the biggest problem that I had was like there was didn't feel like there was loot to chase, and that a lot of the exotics in the game dropped very rarely, and then when the, you did get them. Sometimes they made an impact and sometimes they didn't. And there was a lot of inconsistency with the, like, you know, the higher end gear sets and how, how you can achieve them. And of course, that egregious excuse for a store, the in-game store was just no bueno. So there was certainly a lot of things that was wrong, but I think I'm not alone in saying that that game had so much potential to be really cool. The flight system, the combat system, the four player co-op system, a lot of what they were took from destiny, I think had the opportunity or ha has the option and opportunity to be really cool. But again, there was just n too many things working against them and they needed a lot more time. So hopefully they're, you know, getting that. It sounds like they are. Sounds I would like, love yeah, to we'll see be. this rise from the ashes and have like a, like a no man's sky kind of, you know, comeback moment. That'd be great. Yeah, sounds like we'll be getting an official blog post update relatively soon. Pirates. There you go. All right. Well, I think that's probably going to do it for most of the news for over the weekend. If you guys have any questions, we always remind you that you can drop them at whatsgoodgames.com slash dearwgg. If you can't join us live on Twitch on Monday mornings, you can still be part of the show. So always want to send you that little reminder that you can utilize that to your fullest extent. But of course, we're keeping eyes on the chat. But as you guys know who are here watching with us, we don't interact with the chat as much as we do on our normal gameplay streams because we are trying to keep the content moving along but moving. Brittany we have some things in that document I believe which I'm going to pull up uh -oh. right now also if you're all a Sukadin or Suikoden fan or however you want to say it Euden Chronicles is on Kickstarter and it's already raised $500,000 wait 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 what is this okay so this is, comes from this comes from IGN. We're going to just insert this right here because why not? Euden Chronicle hits crowdfunding goal in two hours. I think it's Euden. Sorry if I'm not saying it right, but you're you're used to that by now. So Euden Chronicles 100 Heroes, the spiritual successor to the Sukaden slash Suikoden, I don't know how to say it, series developed by the same developers, has hit its Kickstarter goal in t just two hours. So the reason... Oh, wait. No, is the Kickstarter link down? Oh, no. Is it broken? So it might be broken. It's probably getting way too much traffic. Anyway, that franchise is incredibly popular. I believe it started on the PlayStation 1. And you can have, what is it? A chat would know more than I do. But hundreds of different characters. You can kind of build your base around you. It's a turn-based RPG. And it sounds like they're bringing it back, which is something people have wanted for a long time. I believe it's spanned from PS1 to PS2. And then it's just been kind of dead in the water for quite some time. So the fact that it's being brought back is incredibly exciting to a lot of people. And it sounds like the Kickstarter is just getting smashed. Well, Great. well, well. Mm -hmm. I, I Kickstarter servers are down since Thirsty Panda. I I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I think I might be indifferent. How do you feel about it? I think you. This is absolutely one hundred percent not your thing. So you know <laughs> what? I will. I will take indifferent. I feel like that's a great reaction. I think this is cool. I mean, I never played that series a lot. I played the second one. Oh gosh, years and years ago. Uh, so obviously way after it had released because it was out on PlayStation 1. It was fine. It just didn't really – it was too many characters, and the characters just felt kind of light. But this was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So my memory is a little, little fuzzy. So, yeah, I'm definitely not, like, the person to go to for this. But I know when Jared Petty is very excited about it. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's not surprising at all. Um, I'm also realizing we didn't n talk about this analog pocket thing that's happening. So I'll pull that up too. Oh, yeah. Um, but I do want to ask a question that we wanted to get into the show uh, last week that we just didn't have time to really answer. But there's a couple of Ghost of Tsushima questions oh. that came in to Dear WGG. And I really thought this one was interesting. From Scooter. Hi, ladies. Long time, first time. I found your brief discussion about photo mode and Ghost of Tsushima to be very interesting. I've never talked to anyone who 
uses to choose to, excuse me chooses to interact with the photo mode feature of the game besides Animal Crossing and yet probably 90% of my most recently played games feature it are photo mode features popular uh, more popular among players than i think or is it a relatively easily implementable feature in games that generates hype and virality virality mm. on mm. social media so that most developers will implement it as graphics engines improve with each generation do you see photo mode pictures becoming a more dominant force in video game marketing rather than cinematics and independently animated art love the show and thanks for opening my eyes for a more progressive side of the gaming industry that's a fantastic question huh for me personally like i've talked about photo mode has never done anything for me it just hasn't. I think it's a cool feature. And my assumption is because I don't really know anyone who loves, loves, loves photo mode is that enough people obviously use it for it to be built in and to add the different features and filters and cinematic things you can do with that. But this game in particular was the first one that got me to use it because it was just so beautiful and gorgeous that I felt inspired to do it. But other than that, I guess I personally don't know anyone who uses photo mode a lot. I see it on my timeline quite a bit, but yeah, I mean it's a great it's great for social media. I think that's like the mm -hmm. downfall to Animal Crossing's photo mode is that in order to get those on social media, you either have to tweet directly through your Switch, which I find incredibly cumbersome because like tagging doesn't auto populate and all of that jazz. But I think the only other way to do it is to use the micro SD card. So you have to either take the SD card out and then get a special reader or you have to put it into your PC. They're, they do make like little dongles that you can attach to your phone, but it's just a, a pain in the butt. Like if they just allowed you to upload them to Nintendo online. It would make things so much easier, but cloud storage Nintendo does not like, especially uh. for Animal Crossing, which doesn't exist for actually. Um, but I think that photo mode is interesting. I think it's a really easy way to add gameplay elements that people enjoy. And I think that it's something that, as you mentioned, Scooter, is much easier to implement, th I think, than people realize because they don't have to create new assets. And this way, people get to have, like, their own personal stamp and have their own experience with it versus just using trailers, which is c clearly a very curated piece of marketing versus a more grassroots, like, let's see your photo mode. So. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think if photo mode would because obviously the free marketing and the you know vi virality is as this person said i don't know if i've ever seen photos from a photo mode on a timeline before and been like i have to play this game now doesn't do it for me but yeah again i guess just stirring up conversation and bringing it up in the timeline helping those little algorithms it does help interesting cool so pocket analog which we didn't do the update on i, I was supposed to add that into the in case you missed it but just like a quick little brief overview from uh, The Verge. So last year, Analog announced The Pocket, a sleek modern handheld designed to play all of your Game Boy cartridges. It was slated to launch this year, but due to the current state of the world, it's not expected to debut in May 2021. Analog cites the unfortunate global state of affairs and supply chain challenges outside of our control as the reason for the delay. But there's good news. Analog is starting pre-orders for the handheld very soon. They're opening up on August 3rd at 8 a.m. Pacific time. And they also revealed some slight design changes to the handheld. The start, select, and home buttons have been moved to the bottom of the device. And it has an optional dock that says the USB-C insertion point has been reset for added stability and additionally there are some new accessories including a clear plastic hard case a faster charger and cartridge adapter so you can play games from the game gear the neo geo pocket color and the atari Lynx. hell yeah this is so cool i don't know if i'd ever use it but it's real neat it looks real pretty the design of this is definitely sleek it's better than that other little handheld that i trolled pretty hard last year oh, with, with the, the, with the with little the wind up yeah the little hand fishing handle thing so it plays what if sorry if you already said this but game boy game boy color game boy advance natively and right? then and then you can do game gear neo geo pocket color and atari links with the accessories that they're going to be selling good thing i still have all of my old cartridges andrea i'm sad pretty for this that's wild it's interesting the anal uh, the analog kind of component of this right like as the name suggests because so many of these games are already available via emulator services or digital subscriptions there's quite a few digital subscriptions you can get for retro games now that allow you to just play them on your pc but i think like people are maybe nostalgic for these little buttons and cross pads 
I guess. So what's the controller compatibility? I must miss that because oh, I know I don't with... think that there is controller well, compatibility. Is there? It comes with an. I just assume because it comes with HDMI, right? So you can play on a screen, a big screen. Because what I'm thinking hmm. is I would love to play some of those older Pokemon games on a big screen. That's one of my favorite things to do because I love those. I love those old janky games. They're not really janky. That's not very fair. But I like playing them, and I would rather not play them on a little small screen. I'd rather play them on. A big screen and you know as we've seen our good friends at nintendo aren't the the greatest at putting some of their older game boy titles on their nintendo switch online system hell they're not good about putting a lot of their games on their nintendo switch online system so this is how i have to play it that's how i have to play it but i'd be curious to know i should look into that i'm looking on the website now um to see if there's like an faq that discusses that exact thing Okay, so Thirsty Panda says there's a switch dock for an additional hundred dollars. Chris G Chris G says you can use eight bit controllers, yes. It's also a handheld. What does that mean oh. you can use eight bit controllers? Do you mean you can use your original controllers or you can use like new Bluetooth controllers that are like third party? 8-Bit do, do is the brand. So I'm, it's like a third-party controller is my understanding. I'm like looking at it real quick. It's a premier third-party video game hardware company with special focus on retro-themed game controllers. So it sounds like you'd have to buy the controller, and then you could do it. But, uh, hmm. yeah. So it looks like I hear a Nendo Switch controller, for example, is $50. 45 to 50 bucks for a controller. So that's like a lot. To so, play your old Game Boy games dude, on a TV. Dude, I just, this is my thing. It's like, I don't understand. Do we have a price on what this is going to cost? Mm, I don't know. I'm don't looking know. on the website here and I see lots of really pretty marketing photos, but I don't see a price, huh? I don't see a price. Yeah, sync up any wireless 8-bit dual Bluetooth or 2.4G oh. controller directly to the dock for wireless play. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, Nintendo, there's a whole audience, a whole bunch of suckers who will happily buy your games over and over and over again because we can't help ourselves. And that way I don't have to spend $100 for a dock. I don't oh. have to spend $45 on a controller. Yeah, so if you hit the pre-order button, you can get it in black or white for $199.99. The hard case, analog dock, tempered glass protect, screen protector, and the fast charging power supply all sold separately. I imagine it comes with its own power supply, but like, so if you get the dock, if you want Brit, it, that's another $100. So now you're at $300 plus you have to buy a controller or I guess it looks like you can use one of your existing uh, 2.4 uh, gigahertz controllers that you have just laying around or you have to buy one of these special ones. So, I mean, huh. at, a, at a minimum, we're talking $300 if you want to play in your TV or 200 if you want to play it in handheld mode. And then if you want the adapters, the Game Gear adapter is 30 bucks, the Neo Geo adapter is 30 bucks, and the Lynx adapter is 30 bucks. So, each of those adapters is sold separately. Uh, 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 <coughs> Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. I mean, I have, I have some retrons. I can always fire those up. But, I mean, I love a native way to buy it, Nintendo. Just, you know, just native. Just kind of stick it in that Nintendo Switch online system. You, you, I know you forget about it from time to time, but it's there. People subscribe to it. I know you just added Donkey Kong Country, which is a fantastic SNES game. But, you know, maybe you could slip some, like, Game Boy games in there as well. You know, I'd buy it. People would buy it. People in chat would buy it. Just a marketing idea. I don't know if you guys like making money. <laughs> it is funny that Chris points out that you also have to pay for shipping, which is like, no one makes you pay for shipping when you're spending that kind of money. Come on now. Yeah. Include it. Take it off, take it off your bottom line. I am. Um, uh, cool. This is it's, a thing it's for people to spend money on that they want to. It's not for me. I have other things I'm going to spend money on. That's like not chairs. this. Yeah, exactly. All of my future payments will be going to this really fancy chair that is on my credit huh. card now. Interesting. I mean, that's too bad. But I feel like I'm going to have to reach out to Jared and get his get his hot take on this. See see what he th see what he thinks. Yeah. Um okay. So, I got distracted from doing our dear WGG by looking at this pocket news. I mean, so the news everybody is just that it's delayed to 2021. 
all of that ever all that other information was actually released last year we just forgot that we were outraged then and we're just as outraged now at how much it is but not outraged that it exists so the, angry the fact that it exists is neat did you see that there's animal crossing new horizon plushies andrea what oh shit. i did not yeah there are i don't know where you can get them they're six to eight inches in height Okay. And are sporting their summery getups from Nintendo's Tropical Island Smash Hits from Japan. I don't know. I'm going to try to. I can't drop this link in Skype, right? Because it'll fuck up the framing. Yeah, don't. Just hold, just hold on to it. I'll hold we, on to we it. Cannot, we're about to. We're, we have just a few more minutes left in the show. Um, yeah. But I did want to mention we have a question from Alan Martinez. It says, Hi, ladies. Now that Ghost of Tsushima is out, what's the next big game that you will play personally? Or will you dive into your backlog in August? I'm taking my sweet time mm. with Ghost until September when Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning is out. I thought that was out in August. Did it get pushed to September? Re-Reckoning. But that's a great question, Alan. Thank you for submitting it. So the game that I'm playing right now is obviously Ghost of Tsushima, like a lot of people are. I'm into Act 2. I'm planning on streaming more. I'm going to do a streaming session, I think, sometime this week. I just haven't decided when. I want to do a Sake and Samurai stream. Oh, hell yeah. Um, where I just basically go around and pet all the foxes and, and sneak through the tall grass. Um, I don't know what else I'm planning to play. Obviously, I'm doing Animal Crossing. But as far as games that are in the backlog that I want to go back to, I definitely want to play Liberated. So I downloaded it for mm. Switch. Mm -hmm. Haven't started it yet. Didn't spend enough time with Starcrossed. Rihanna and I have been having fun with Halo. I'm definitely down to play more of the Master Chief Collection, making my way through those campaigns leading up to holiday 2020, but obviously have time for that. And then I think I really want to spend more time in, well, really in The Division. The Division 2 is a game that I really enjoyed my time in, and I've skipped a lot of content, so I want to play that. Mm. There's new Rainbow Six Siege stuff too. Britt, there's too much stuff to play. I know. And it's like, oh, we're kind of in a lull. And then all of the things you want to play come flooding back. I think for me personally, the next release I'm looking forward to is Wasteland 3. I'm excited about that. It kind of looks like a Divinity Original Slin slash post-apocalyptic twist Rooney on it. I also want to play through the Halo games again. I've heard, I'm, I've done Reach, Combat Evolved 2, and I'm halfway through 5. I'm kind of jumping all over the place, which is weird. But the other thing I started up, Andrea, I got to eat crow. I played Stadia all weekend. Oh, look at you! Good for you, Britt. Are you playing Darksiders Genesis? No, I'm playing Orcs Must Die 3, and it is so much fun. Oh, I love that you. game. I'm I so know. glad that you finally took it out of the box and are trying it out. So, um, can we look forward to your extended hands-on impressions with the Stadia in this game in What's Good Games Friday episode? Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, how much more time do you think that's going to take? What's your plan for after Orcs Must Die 3? I don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead. I'm still working on Story of Seasons. I'm halfway through a year two. I'm just, uh, here's my plan, Andrea, is I'm trying to date everyone in this game before I settle down. <laughs> you know, sow my oats. Like, get, get my wild things out. Go spread my seed, if you will. Uh, so I'm working on wooing everyone. I'm giving them all eggs and wild grapes every day. And it's working. They're nice. all really, they all want my nuts. <laughs> um, but it's about that time where I need to settle down. I need to give someone a blue feather, a feather of the blue variety. And then they'll be like, oh, you gave me this blue feather. Cool. I guess we're married now. And I think we're going to sleep in, I think we sleep in the same bed, which is nice, but I haven't gone out on a single date from any of these people, Andrea. They all say they're my boyfriend and girlfriend. I got about four boyfriends and three or four girlfriends, but none of them take me out. Hmm. It's like a very one-sided relationship. Yeah, it's a weird it's a weird thing, but I'm going to probably try to wrap that up soon. But that's still, you know, probably 15 hours away. So I don't know. It's, it's a weird feeling to be like, well, what do we play next? I want to play Hellblade. Ooh, yes. Good call. I haven't played that yet. Yeah, that's only like a day, though. You could hypothetically play that all in one sitting. It's a short game, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, Sapphire Dime Rumi, the Fire Emblem DLC. Absolutely. That's another thing I want to play. <laughs> so, Oh, uh, Paper Mario, Origami King. I have oh, that. yes. Downloaded. Thank you, Nintendo, for the code. But I haven't played that yet either. <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like we have our hands full, Alan, with games. And hopefully you're enjoying your time in Ghost of Tsushima, picking mm -hmm. up all of the, you know, sword kits and going to all the shrines and 
all that all jazz. Boxes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, just a clarification that it, the release date for Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning is indeed September 8th. And so this is actually not bad timing because Destiny has now been delayed to November. So I can spend many hours playing Re-Reckoning. Really I'm very excited, excited for that. I'm, I'm super excited. I just looked at my Amazon purchase history, and it looks like I purchased the collector's edition. I have no recollection of doing that. For Re-Reckoning? I, yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that collector's editions were available to order, but I guess pre-orders are open. Yeah, and the same thing happened to Ghost of Tsushima, which, by the way, I'm editing and uploading soon to What's Good Games channel. Oh, exciting. Love those unboxing videos. Ooh, that yes, I saw the photo with oh. the mask. Oh, it's on a stand? Yeah, it has a stand. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, or I could get some tape and, like, put it on my face. Does it not have, like, a string to put it on your no. face? No, nope, it's just... It's just a thing. It's a display piece, but mm. it could be kind of fun to like ah, do a whole podcast like this. I mean, it muffles your voice a little bit, and it's not really affected it- as a COVID mask because it's got a giant hole in it. I but, know. So, but yeah. you could drink. You could drink with a straw. I could. I absolutely could. See, there's little solutions to all of life's problems right there. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, all right everybody and that is going to do it for this episode of what's good games live thank you to everybody who wrote in we have a lot of questions on that doc that we can try to get to in friday's episode of course we've always got next monday and thank you for bearing with us as we had a few technical difficulties at the start of the episode please don't forget to hit that follow button for us here on twitch.tv slash what's good games and also make sure your notifications are turned on so you know whenever we just decide to randomly stream because it's happening more and more these days we don't plan it. We're just like, hey, maybe I'll turn the stream on right now. I had a meeting canceled. Boom. Stream's on. Feel like going to collect some seashells? Boom. Stream is on. And you're never going to know unless you hit that notifications button. And make sure you follow us at what's good underscore games. Brittany. Andrea. Do you have any parting thoughts for We're the children masked. watching? Oh, hey, the Patreon, the show up. I wonder if that's on their YouTube channel in case they missed it. Oh, YouTube.com slash Patreon, I believe, is the uh, website. Oh, yeah, Brett and I did a thing last week. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, I'm looking to see if it's up yet, and it looks like it's not up yet, so never mind. JK, don't go there. But we Oh, wait, there it is. I lied. It's there. JK, so- go there. <laughs> the Patreon's YouTube page. Andrew and I did a fun little, it was like 15-minute interview with the folks at Patreon, and we failed to talk about our Patreon at all we did not do it but we just, talked about some other fun stuff just ran out of time you know yeah, yeah, so many yeah. creators uh particularly if you're into D, there was a couple of D creators that you might want to check out as well in that same gaming episode but uh we'll leave you with that enjoy the rest of your monday have a fantastic week and we will see you guys soon bye everybody